So we have a 2002 Ford Ranger in the shop and Steve and I are getting ready to put a new rear end in it. Uh, it's actually my father's truck and Steve made my father retire from the bus company and now that he's retired he keeps breaking stuff so Steve and I have to fix it. <laughs> this is this week's dilemma. He blew the rear end up in the truck and uh, I don't know, I guess he wasn't doing any burnouts or nothing but it just happened. So that's what the story is. <laughs> so here's the new junkyard rear end laying on the floor of the shop and it's gonna go right in that truck. Should be lots of fun. All right, so we got our, we're doing our rear end swap out here and we got four 12 millimeter bolts on for the drive shaft. We're gonna start off by taking that off. We're gonna pull the cover on the back of the rear end. Um, Roland, uh, Tony's father already pulled the cover and said that you know he had heavy metal debris in there. And the axle has got an excessive play by a long shot and it's completely stripped out. So what we wanna do is match up um, you know, the gear ratio um, with the one that we got from the salvage yard. Now we've already determined the back and plates are smaller. Our brake shoes here are larger. So we're going to swap our emergency brake. Uh, excuse me, we're gonna remove the axles because we're gonna put new seals in the uh, user rear end right now. And we're going to unbolt the backing plates as a complete assembly so that um, we'll have minimal stuff to do. We got four bolts to take them off. And that's kind of the direction we're gonna go. So we wanna remove the cover and then remove the cover on the the used axle that we bought from the salvage yard to make sure the gears are the same ratio. Um, right now we've got four 12 millimeter, 12 point bolts to take the drive shaft out. We're gonna remove that. And um, then we're gonna pull the cover, which is there's 10, 13 millimeter bolts on the cover. And we're gonna remove the cover on the salvaged axle and make sure that our gear ratio is the same. This is a two wheel drive pickup truck. It's really not gonna make too much of a difference. Um, but we want the gear ratio to be close. So I'm pull these out. I cracked these loose by hand already. It's kind of a tight fit with the ratchet. You can use the socket if you want. I mean, an uh, uh, open end 12 point box wrench, I should say. Get the cover off of it now and uh, make sure that we have the same gear ratio. So Rolly already cracked these bolts loose to find out what was going on. So and then you put the cover back on with the same oil because it's junk. So we're gonna zip all these 13 millimeters out, pop the cover off. We're gonna pull the axle clips out Yank the axles out. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, look at that nice silver oil, huh? <laughs> there you go. Alright, so we're going to wet this drain and then we'll uh, come back and take a look inside here. Here's the man behind the mess. <laughs> You're late. <laughs> I'm late. So this is the guy that when I came in at four in the morning, he'd kick the end of my bed at seven. So you get in the auto body shop. It's now 10 o'clock. Where you been? <laughs> the roles reversed. Uh, yeah, all right. We'll, we'll get you some slack. Okay, so what you want to do before you even pick up a rear end is if, hopefully your rear end will have a tag on it. Uh, this shiny one came off the rear end that's in the truck. So it says right here, 3L73. So we know that the truck originally came with 373 gears in it. We picked up this rear end from a scrapyard. 
pulled the tag, I had to wire wheel it out to read it, and uh, this one says 373 as well, so this one has 373s in it, uh, same differential pattern, so we should be good to go. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna zip off the cover on the rear end we just got from the salvage yard. We're gonna, we're gonna inspect the gears before we go any further. And uh, make sure uh, that the gears are all set on the inside. So here is the rear end that's in the car. There's a broken tooth right here. So, you know, we su suspect that the ring gear or whatever is broke um, in your truck. Take the cover off, inspect all the gears. It's kind of what you're looking for. Um, all these teeth should look the same. Same. You know, look in the middle, look around the edges for something that's broken or chipped. Uh, this one's chipped right here. And, um, you know, there was, as Steve said, said, there was particles in the bottom of the housing. And uh, we just drained all that out of there. So we pull the cover off and the gear oil looks nice and clean on it. So we're going to rotate it and drain it. And then, you know, make sure that our uh, our gear ratio, you know, the tag said it was good. So, I mean, we're just going to do a quick count on our ring gear here. The original one in the vehicle had 41 teeth. We'll check this one. And uh, we're just going to make sure it looks good and clean on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we already know what we're changing on that one. So we're going to pull the, pull the axles on this thing and we're going to put new rear axle seals in it. I mean, it's been sitting for a while and you don't know how long it's been. So you don't want to put it together and then, you know, have the thing start leaking, you know, a thousand miles down the road. The axle seals are real inexpensive. You have to change the oil anyway. So we'll get this all stripped down and then we'll put it in, into the uh, vehicle. And we're going to change our backing plates over with our brake shoes, everything as an assembly. Emergency brake shoes, everything will come off as an assembly once we pull the axles out. We've already made our measurement over here on our two bolts here. So you got four bolts, so we match this up to make sure it's the same on the other ones. So this axle actually has a 9-inch brake drum and we have a 10-inch brake drum. And all of our stuff is new, we'd rather have the bigger brakes in the back and all our parts are new anyway. So we're going to reuse all of our stuff and basically all we're going to use on this is the gears. Now we had priced out, um, you know, the gears on Rock Auto and um, everything came up to just about $500 and that's pretty much what we paid for the rear end already together. So sometimes you want to go in and fix it and you realize the parts are more than if, you know, you can buy a rear axle already used. and. This one had, you know, 64,000 miles on it, slow mileage, so we were comfortable with that, and that's the direction we're going to go. So we're going to drain the oil, and we will rotate this thing over so the oil drains, and we're going to start stripping this down. So the other thing we're going to do, too, is um, we want to inspect the gears so we can turn the thing right here. Inspect all your teeth on the rear end that you're replacing it with, and um, go all the way around, check the spider gears, make sure nothing's chipped or broken, missing in there, right, Steve? Yeah, once we get the oil drained out of it, we're really gonna get a better look at it. So we're gonna drain the oil and then we'll take a good look at it. So if you're missing the tag off your rear end, you can spin the, um, the ring gear around and um, it says right on it, 373, and um, the other one matches up. We'll go over and it'll show you on the other rear end. So this one says the same thing, might be a little hard to see on camera, but it says 373 as well. So we should be good, good to go. Okay, so our spider gears are all damaged right in here. You can see these all damaged. And then we're gonna rotate it. We'll show you the chip and the ring gear. Right there, it's a big chip in the ring gear. So to fix this thing, you know, we would have needed a ring and pinion, and then you need a uh, pinion installation kit, which comes with the pinion nut, the crush washer, the seals, the shims. That was like 94 bucks. The ring and pinion was 294. So you're already at 400 bucks right there. And then this thing needs spider gears now because these are blown out. So the spider gears are damaged or all ground up in here. So what happens is when you chip a gear like this on the ring, well, that thing gets flown around and then it found its way into the uh, spider gears and it just makes a mess, right? So now you look at the spider gear kit, which was over a hundred dollars. So right now we're at 500 bucks and just pots. And if you need a cage, if the cage is damaged, the cage was $200, which is this right here. 
and this looks to me to be the open cage so um, it, it just was more practical to get a used rear axle than to, than to rebuild this thing so this, this thing turned out to be pretty ugly so all right we're going to start um, spraying everything will penetrate in oil and we'll strip this thing down and get rolling in so we're going to go around this rear end hit everything in penetrating oil steve is taking all the brake lines off of the other rear end because we just put all new brake lines on this one so we're going to swap all the new stuff over that we didn't do long ago over to the uh salvage yard rear end that we have so we're going to hit the shock mounts right there and on this one, uh, the drum brakes are different, they're bigger, so we gotta swap all this over. So there's four bolts that hold it on. Put those. Come over here. That. So I'm just gonna kind of work my way around, and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we will go over and show you our new axle from the salvage yard that we've stripped all down. Roland's going off to get a couple axle seals for it. And we're going to reuse our backing plates and shoes and hardware. That's all brand new, our emergency brake cables. We're going to disconnect our shocks now. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the pin on the axle here for our spider gears. And we don't really care about this because it's all mush anyway. So... We're going to pop both axles out of this thing, and then we're going to remove our back plates. Now, if you're doing a traditional um, rear axle swap and your drums and shoes were the same size and they're good quality and you don't have to change it, you won't have to go through this. But um, we're going to disconnect our shocks, we're going to disconnect our brake lines, and we're going to leave everything hanging up here. We're going to, with our emergency brake cables attached to our brake shoes, we're going to pull these up. And we're just going to tie wrap them up over here so that everything's, you know, hanging. And then we're going to get the new axle in. So we've already got the drive shaft out. We need to disconnect our shocks. We're going to pull the axles, get our backing plates pulled up over here. And, um, and then our emergency, our flex brake hose here, we're, this is brand new. We're reusing this as well. Roland had replaced this recently. So we're disconnecting our brake lines as a whole assembly here. So we're not going to have to have to deal with any of that. So um, we'll, we'll start stripping it down. We'll show you what's going on. Let's go over and take a look at the axle that we stripped down right now. So we removed our backing plates over here with the brake lines on it and the emergency brake shoes. And this is what it's going to look like on ours. It's going to be hanging. We just slipped our axles back in place because we removed the seals over here. So we're going to tap two new seals in and um, we have our cover off here and our gears, everything is good. We did an inspection of it. The oil was clean. The gears are good. There's no damage. So we're happy with the rear axle that we got. So everything's stripped down on this thing right now and we're going to put this back in place and then we're just going to reattach our drums right to the axle tubes. You know, we'll have to pull the axles out, put our new seals in, attach our drums with our brake shoe assemblies and the brake lines as an assembly and then slip our seals and axles in, and we'll be good to go. So we're gonna start taking this thing apart here now. So um, a little while ago on this truck, Steve and I did uh, two other videos. Uh, one video was to show you how to remove the seals out of the axle tube, and then the other video was to show you like how to pull the axles out. So we'll put a couple of links to those videos in the description of this video in case you have to do that. Right? Yep. All right. <laughs> All right, so we've got our two axles out, we removed our pin and everything's much here so we don't care, we pull the axles out. And the back complete bolts over here were 14 millimeters and 14s on the nuts on the inside. So we zip those out. So the back complete's are ready to get knocked off with the brake shoes. We're gonna disconnect the shocks right now which are um, 18 millimeter um, for the nuts here and then put a 15 millimeter wrench over here. We took our our hose off up here, the flex hose um, that attaches to the body brake line, and that's disconnected with one 13 millimeter bolt over here. And we're gonna, we'll end up unplugging our connector in a second for the speed sensor. We took our two 3.8 brake lines out on this side over here. So the two brake lines are disconnected, and we're just tucking them up in here on the leaf spring. 
so that all this stuff is up out of our way. We're gonna disconnect the two shocks right now and we use a small pair of ice grips to just block the brake line off so that we're not gonna be weeping fluid here. And basically we're gonna, once we knock the backup plates off with the emergency brake here, we're gonna secure them to the leaf springs with bungee cords. And once we disconnect the shocks, the only thing we have left to do is take the U-bolts off and we can drop the sacks down. We're gonna put a couple of jack stands underneath it, drop it down, and um, we're just gonna lump it off and then switch the other one on and start reassembling. All right, so we're gonna remove our shocks with the 18 millimeter nuts and the 15 wrench. some bungee cords up over to the leaf spring here and out. Let's see here. Maybe it would just no, it's not nice. Okay. <laughs> I'm tuck these up like that. Okay, so let that hang like that. Now we're gonna uh, just remove our U-bolts. And we're going to move the stand here so we can get the axle stands in here. And everything is stripped down on this puppy, so we're just going to take the U-bolts out and um, we're going to be able to transfer the um, the used axle in place and then we're going to start reassembling. So the only thing we're doing now is we're going to, we're going to have to reach around and disconnect this sensor here for the rear axle. Let me get a screwdriver and we'll disconnect that. Uh, we have a couple transmission jacks, so we have the rear end supported with these jacks, make it a little easier on us. Steve's going to undo that. Eighteen millimeters for the four bolts. truck back up in the air, everything's disconnected, and then me and Tony are going to lump this axle off. Just want to let you guys know, when you're going to drop this thing, when we lift the truck up to separate this, the axle, the weight of it's going to want to swing down into this position. So I just had Tony 
you know, guiding it down and holding it so it's, you know, on the stand. So whether you have it on the ground on jack stands, the weight of this thing is going to want to pull down like this. So we're going to we're going to lower the vehicle down. I just greased up the front of the plates here that are going to ride on these shims here to keep it quiet. They get these little plastic shims in here. We made sure our studs were nice and clean so they line up with our holes over here. And as I'm lowering it down, Tony's going to be rolling this thing up in place until um, we get the pins lined up in here. And um, that's what we get going on right now. All right, we're starting to tighten our U-bolts down. Make sure our bolts are lined up with the old marks. And we blew down the plate so they were clean on top here. These are 18 millimeters. Just gonna run these back. You want them to look even. The amount of studs sticking up here. Same marks they were on. So we mounted our back and plates back on with our shoe assemblies. We hooked up the brake lines and um, we got the shocks in place. We just got to tighten the two bolts up and we replaced the axle seals while we had it out. And we can show you that on another video. So we did the axle seals while we're out. Um, and I just put the clip back in, my two C clips. So we have our axle seals all back in nice and tight. And everything's moving good for our spider gears. So that's all good. We're just gonna tighten this up right here. And um, we tighten our U-bolts up. We'll show you guys that. And um, we're pretty close. We got our vent clip for our hose that goes up on this side over here. We're gonna take our old clip on and hook that onto the frame. We're gonna put that on. And uh, basically throw the drive shaft in this thing, fill it up with oil, and we're pretty good. We put our speed sensor, we plug that back in on the front side. Uh, we noticed the rubber came out with the speed sensor. It's a little blue one. It seemed to fit on better when we had the rubber in the sensor, not on the connector, and then it slipped in in place. So we're going to put the drive shaft in right now and um, tighten this up for our spider gear bolt and um, tighten our two shocks up. And uh, we're ready to put some oil in this thing and be close to being done. We clean this down so it's nice and flush. Probably gonna hit this a little bit with the little uh, cookie thing here, cleaner. This is a very smooth dough. I'm just gonna run it over real smooth. And then put a thin coat of grease, put our gasket on, clean our cover, get the cover on it, and then we're gonna top off the oil. So we've got our brake lines connected um, and tight. We've got our back of plates all bolted back on. The shocks are all back on. The leaf spring bolts are tight. We're gonna put the one clip on for our Vent holes over here.
We're putting a thin coat of grease on our cover. And we got our new gasket here. We line up our holes. I just like to put a thin coat on. Pumps it stick, and when you're tightening it, you'll see a little bit ooze out the sides, and you know you've got to tighten evenly. Um, so we're doing that. All right. Got our bolts here and our tag. You want to make sure you put that tag back on just in case you ever need anything, you know, for seals or anything, you'll know what the uh, rear end is. And um, we got our cover nice and clean. We got the axle over here nice and clean. These are all 13 millimeters, so get this nice and clean. I want to just wipe this one drip off here. This thing has just not stopped dripping all day. It's all right. Once I get this cover on, I ain't worried about it anymore. Right in my pocket. Normally the tag's over here on this side. I'm gonna put it back here. We got all these tight, tight, and we'll snug them down with a little zip gun, and then we're gonna hand tighten them all. It's two in the bucket. <laughs> Ten bucks says he drops another one. <laughs> oh. All right, we're just gonna just snug these down with the gun. Of course, we're going to tighten them all by hand. Get these snug. It's nice with gaskets. I mean, you can, you know, urethane this cover or a silicone it, but gaskets are pretty inexpensive. I prefer to use a gasket. Yeah, it's in the five volts. All right, we're gonna go around one more time. All right, we put our clip in up over here for our vent hose. So the clip's back in place right here. And uh, basically we're gonna throw the uh, gear oil in it, throw the brake drums on. We're gonna check and see if we need an adjustment on the rear shoes. They're probably good, but we may just give them just a little tiny adjustment. And um, we're gonna fill the rear end right now and put the drive shaft in. Boy, that puppy's been in there, huh? <laughs> And the rear end takes 80, 90 gear oil. And it's probably gonna take two quarts, maybe a whisk of more. So let's start filling that now. Okay, so we can just squeeze the bottle in. I left it in the car all night, so it's cold. <laughs> well, it's nice and thick. It's like pushing molasses in this thing right now. <laughs> Yeah, my father warmed up in front of the heater and I said to put it in Steve's dryer, but he wouldn't let us. <laughs> no. I'm old like that. 
It's like putting valve covers in a dishwasher, right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> it's all fun and games until your wife comes home. <laughs> Two, um, but it took just a whisker more than that. So you know what? Now that was completely full. And we're gonna dry everything down, pop the drive shaft in. You tighten this plug up. You just want it snug. You don't have to crank the crap out of it. So we're gonna dry everything down. Here, the drive shaft in. Put a new seal in here last year, so we're not replacing the seal. So these are our 12 millimeter bolts that we're gonna get them all caught by hand. So I'll run these down with the little 3/8 zip gun, and then we're gonna tighten them by hand with the ratchet. up my hand. The zip gun got them pretty pretty snug. Good. This is tight. on, adjust the brakes, and we're going to bleed the red shoes. And we should be ready to take up for a test drive. Getting ready to bleed the brakes, so we got one guy in the car, and get underneath and bleed the drums in the thing. Right? Bleed, bleed the brakes. Bleed the brakes. <laughs> adjust the brakes up and we'll be good. Okay, put on emergency brake. Okay, 
Peel it off. All right, we know our shoes are settled in nice now. And we're just looking over the whole job, you know, to make sure we got everything in. We tighten our bolt up over here. We have our vent tube and clip on. We've got our leaf spring bolts all tight. We got our backup plates all on, shoes adjusted, brakes bled. And you know, we, we check our brake lines over here. There's no leaks, so we're good. Um, step on the brakes, Rolly. Look right here, Tom, make sure we don't have any leaks. Yep. Okay. All right, let off. Okay, we got our cover on, we got our fluid in for the rear rim, we got our shocks tight. And that's, that's pretty much it on this one. We're gonna go off for a road test. And we're just gonna wipe down, you know, our fog comes off this, so it looks like a nice clean job. Put our rubbers back in here and we should be good.